just like we did with posts, we're going to create a new path operation for creating a new user. So we'll go to the bottom of our main document. And I'm going to create a new function. I'll say, uh, we'll call this create user. And so just like we have for creating a post, I'm going to copy this decorator and we'll rename it. So it is going to be a post request, but it's going to be sent to the URL of users because we're no longer working with posts. And keep in mind, you get to select whatever URL or path you want to use. So if you want to call this, I mean, you, it's bad practice to call it create user, um, but you can choose whatever you want. I just, I think it makes sense to call it users. And anytime you create something, remember the status code should always be the default 201. And I'll get rid of the response model for now, just to keep things simple. Now we're ultimately going to be using our database to create a brand new user. So let's go ahead and copy this DB right here from all of the other path operations, because that's going to have to go in there. And then anytime we want to, you know, receive data from the user, because the user is going to have to send the email he wants to register with, as well as his password in the body of the request, it always makes sense to define a specific schema so that we can ensure that the user does provide both of those. So just like we did with posts, we're going to create a brand new schema. And I can call this user, or uh, we can call this user. I think this one, it makes sense to call this user create. So this is going to handle just for creating users. And we're going to inherit from base model. And for the user create, there's going to be an email field, which is going to be a string, as well as a password field, which is going to be of a type string. And when it comes to validating the user, right, it's going to check to make sure that an email is provided and a password is provided. However, we can get a little bit more granular than that. If you actually go to the Pydantic documentation, we also have a field called email string. So this is going to validate that the email property is a valid email. However, we need to have the email validator library installed, but that should automatically have already been installed for us when we installed FastAPI with the all flag. And so if you do a pip freeze, right, we should be able to see that we have our email validator already installed. Uh, if you don't have it installed for some reason, just go ahead and do a pip install email validator. And that should install that library. And so what we'll do is from the Pydantic library, we're going to import email string. And then we can say this is going to be email, uh, of type email string. So that's going to ensure that this is a valid email and not just some random text. Then back in our main.py file, just like we did before, we can say user, and then this is going to use schemas.usercreate. Uh, and so the email address and the password is going to be stored in an object called user. There's going to be a Pydantic uh, object as well. And uh, if you forgot how to save data to uh, the database or create something uh, with SQL Alchemy, just go ahead and take a look at the create posts. And we can essentially just copy this. And we're just going to rename a few things. So we'll say new user. And then we're going to grab models.user now. And then once again, what we want to do is we want to take the user that we get back from here, from our schema. We want to convert it to a dictionary and then unpack that dictionary. Then we're going to add it to our database. We're going to commit it. Then we're going to refresh it so we see the brand new user. And then we can go ahead and just return new user. All right, let's give that a shot. And then within our uh, Postman, we can right click on this, select add request. We're going to name this create user. This is going to be a post request. And then in the body, we'll go to raw once again, and then JSON. And then here we can pass in the email. We'll give it some random email. So I'll call this carl at gmail.com and then password. 
this will be password123. All right, and then for the URL, just copy posts. And then here, we'll just change this to users. All right, so let's give this a shot. Let's see if this works. And it looks like it worked, right? We got the email, we got the password back, we got the created at, and we've got an ID. But just to double check, like we always do, go ahead and go to your users table, select query tool, select star from users now, because we're now querying no longer the post table, we're querying the users table. If I run this, we can see that we do get the new email that we created or the new user that we created with carl at gmail.com. Now, as a quick test, just to make sure that email validator works, uh, I'm going to change this and we'll just say some random text. This is obviously not a valid email. So let's see if it properly creates that user. And it looks like our schema validator worked and says value is not a valid email address. So you can see the powerfulness of the Pydantic library being able to automatically check to see if that's a valid email address. All right. But one thing I didn't like about creating the user is that if we change this back to a valid email, I'll say, I'll just call this new user at gmail.com. We create that user. You see that he gets his password back. Now, why in the world would he want to see his password back? There's no reason to ever send the password back to the user at any point. Uh, and so one of the things I want to do is I want to define our response model so that we never send back the user. And I think you guys should already be able to do that, but we'll walk, I'll walk you through how to do that. So let's go to our schemas. We've got our user create. Let's create our, uh, let's create a new class and I'll call this um, user out. And so this is going to be uh, the shape of our model when we send back the user uh, to the client that requested it. It's going to extend base model as well. And here we're going to send out a couple things. Uh, so there's going to be an ID now. The user should know his ID. Email. That's going to be of email string again. And then we'll just leave out password. So by leaving out password, we won't ever send it back. But just like we did with the post model, remember, this is going to be a SQL alchemy um, model that we get. And we need Pydantic to convert it to a regular Pydantic model. So we need this config right here. And then in our path operation, we can set the response model to be schemas.user out. All right. And then now if I just change the fields up a little bit, just create a new email, you can see that we get the ID and the email as well, but there's no password. And that's exactly what we want. And so now you guys should be fairly comfortable with um, being able to define a response model as well as an, uh, a request model so that you can pick and choose whatever field you want. Uh, one last change I want to make is I want to go ahead and just add the created at field as well. And we can just copy this right here. So now just create another email. Right, and now we get the created field. So we got all the fields that we want. 